That's right, right. Chris, bro. What are you saying? Right, T- Tion Wayne is in the building, yeah? Fuck off, man. <laughs> Loud and trim, bro. Loud and trim, man. <laughs> what are you saying? Yeah, not bad, bro. How are you? Nah, I'm all right, man. Fucking chilling, in it? Chilling, kicking yeah, yeah. back. Nah, yes, what are you saying? Have you done a video yet, or...? Nah, I'm not doing one today, innit? Because, like... A day off? Having a day off. Because normally, you know what it is, yeah? All my other videos are done. I've woken up. Yeah. Had, a, had an idea straight away, innit? And then yeah. jumped on it straight away. This morning, it was kind of blank, innit? So I thought, allow it. I was just like, uh... No, no video today, but, like... Got to keep them coming, innit? People seem yeah, to be... Yeah, definitely. In, people seem to be enjoying them, innit? So... Mash them out, yeah, I mean, like, it. obviously, as we're seeing from a lot of DJs now, it's just, like, content, 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 basically. Because yeah, everyone's fucking chilling in, doing fuck all, mate. It's long, like... <laughs> but I don't... I never really used to do much stuff anyway. Like... Yeah. I never really used to, like... I wasn't... Like, I didn't really go out drinking, because I'm always DJing, innit? So I might uh, go work, a full-time yeah. job, come yard, chill, and then go DJing. I don't really do anything else. Mm. So I'm saying in it, so yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not it's not much, it's not too much of a change for me. It's just like I can't go out and show the. You cards. can't go out and do your, <laughs> yeah, do yeah. your thing basically. What's yeah. what, what you been doing? Obviously, I, I see you playing. What are you playing? Xbox, PS4. What are you yeah, doing? playing. I'm, I'm on Xbox in there. I'm playing cool. Like I mashed up bare hours of Call of Duty, man. <laughs> like I'd wait, I'd wake up there, and then I go clean up downstairs, and I come up, play a couple of games of Call of Duty, do yeah. my full like go work my full time job. Yeah. Do little bits and pieces, and then, yeah, man, just mash out Call of Duty. Every time I get a little chance, I have a little game of Call of Duty, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, that, see, I sold my PS4, so like, I got nothing, man. You no, know, you're lacking, bro. Like, you can't... Nah, man. You need to... Oh, you know, yeah, you need... If I didn't have an Xbox yet, I'd be fucking bored, bro. Bro, how do like, you think I feel, man? <laughs> there's only... There's only... Seven, there's no point. There's no point buying a new one. PS5 is going to come out, so no yeah, point. Yeah, I hear that, I hear that. Um, right. But, like, obviously, I'm, like, now, obviously, now I'm doing this, so it's keeping yeah. me bright, too. Bro, I've been watching, you know what, yeah, you're the first live I've watched through start to finish, man. There's actually, <laughs> well, I'm, I can't lie to you, yeah, there's some people who've watched it from, like, start to end, and I've never done that, and, like, some people are actually doing it, and it's crazy. Yeah. You know what, it's, like, it's, it's good, man, it's good, like... Like, even, like, Simo's one yesterday, because I know yeah. Simo from back, because I, I went on tour with them. Yeah, you went on tour, yeah. Uh, went on tour with them, like, I've known Simo for about, like, about a year now. Yeah. Like, he's a good guy, man. And obviously, Day Day, I watched all the way that through. The other ones I didn't really watch before, but ever since, yeah, starting from Day Day's one, I've watched them more, innit? So, and actually, now, Wavy's one as well, innit? Wavy's? Yeah. <laughs> you're just waffling, nah, Let like, me just Wavy's <laughs> Wavy from the ends, innit? So, like... Yeah, yeah. Like, he's all right, man, but... <laughs> he's, he's, he's locked in with uh, JW now, isn't it? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Ag- agency thing, innit? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But would you want to get into that? You know what? Yeah, I said at the start of um, when I started DJ, when I decided back in. And the oh, you already finished. started on my questions and I haven't even asked it yet. <laughs> <laughs> nah, like I would um, I was like, oh, I'm not gonna get into an agency because the thing is with agencies, right? They have too much control over you. Mm. Like, say, for instance, yeah, I want to go, go, I want to go, like, I'm, I'm part of an agency, and then they tell me I can't pay X, Y, Z, then I'm not yeah. giving, I'm not giving the people CB in it, I'm just giving them, like, whatever they want, it's dead, man, like, I've had, I've had it before, man, like, trying, like, um, managers trying to tell me what to play, yeah, and it's dead, like, you don't, you, you don't feel, you don't feel good playing music, because you're playing shit you don't like playing, I hate playing music I don't like playing. I think that's a lot of yeah. I think that's a lot of people. Yeah, man. Like, I can't. The whole the, the whole commercial, the commercial clubs and things where you have to play. You can't play too much urban. When they say don't play too much urban, it's dead. Mm. It's so dead, man. Like, like I used to. I, I did it in a club. I don't really want to say it out on live in it, but <laughs> like I was there, <laughs> and then the manager was like, so it was over Christmas time in it, and the manager. So I was there for about. A month or so in it, and then the manager, the manager kept coming up to me and was like, "Oh, play some, play this, play that," and I was like, oh, "Okay, whatever." And then after, like, after about three times, she mm. goes, "Oh, so she come, she come, like, she messaged me saying, oh, next time you come in, can you play this, this, and this?'" I was like, "Wasn't the dance floor busy? Like, the the <laughs> dance floor, the dance floor was rammed all night. Yeah, I didn't do Wait, anything." Where, where's this? What venue is this? I don't want to say it out in there. Oh, okay. okay, okay. <laughs> Thanks, text me privately about that one. Text me privately. But um, I don't want to, like, what was it? Like, I said to her, I was like, the dance floor was packed. 
I was like, what's the problem in it? And then he's like, oh, yeah, but all our other DJs, they like tend to play a lot of stuff. Bro, I played the commercial stuff. I played a little... I, to be honest, when I play in like, the, the big commercial places, I don't really play too much urban. Like, you're not going to yeah. see me playing D-Block in it, in those places and stuff like that. I'll, play, I'll keep it bare commercial so everyone enjoys the party and stuff like that. But then they still wasn't happy with it, in it. So then mm. I just quit. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you yeah. No, no, carry on, carry on. Like, you need to know when to say no in it. Like, yeah. you need to know when to just stop. Like, because, to be honest, in this game, you can't be taken for a dickhead, man. You need to fucking just, just do your thing. I feel thing, like man. it gets to a point where, like, if, if you're in an agency, like, it could get you to a certain point, And then I feel like afterwards, you kind of have to figure out for yourself if you're cut out for it or not. Yeah, so I, with me, with me, I wouldn't go down the agency route. I would just, I, I, I've been doing things my on my own. Actually, things yeah. working fine in it. I've been doing things on my own for what two, two and a half years now. Yeah, and everything, everything seems fine in it. So, like, how did you start? Like, prof, like, what got, what made you start getting into DJing and everything? <laughs> so, um, what was it? My brother. So I got two. I got two brothers. But my older yeah. brother Jermaine. He's a, he's been a DJ for fine like way back in the vinyl days, isn't it? Mm. So then he, we was at his house over, it was it was bare, like, quite a few years ago, innit? And he, he brought the decks out, innit? And yeah. I was like, oh, let me have a little go, man. And I couldn't do it, innit? I couldn't, I couldn't mix, I couldn't do anything. He was trying to teach us, yeah, but I couldn't do it, innit? So then what I'd done was I bought, I went home, and then I bought a little, like, a tiny controller. It was about literally that big, innit? It was no longer than, like, 10 inches long, innit? It was bare <laughs> small, man. And, um, what, them, like, travel ones? You, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, I think I've got here. Hang on, I've got one. Yeah. Where is it? Oh, I ain't got it. I ain't even got it, man. But, um, yeah, it was bit, like, literally, you see, this, you see this keyboard, yeah? Yeah. It was literally, like, that, but smaller. A little bit smaller, really. Um, so I bought that, and I was just doing all the basic, um, basic beat matching and stuff like that, and I thought, oh, yeah. right, this, this is all right, man. Then I bought the, um, I bought the new Mark Mix Track 2 controller, bad boy controller. Um, <clears throat> got that. And then, what was it? Oh, then then I, um, so then I moved in with my ex now. And then um, I was running tunes in the house, in it, but she couldn't do it. Like, she was moaning about the music too much, innit? Yeah, and yeah. I shot all my stuff. I got rid of it. But then before I shot all my stuff, I was, I knew how to beat match. I knew how to do, I knew, I knew how to do everything in it. So then I got rid of it. Then I just, took a break from the um the DJ thing and I just went back to going back to the gym and stuff like that. And then um what was it? I don't know what I was in bed. So you're blaming your ex to for you stopping, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> 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 on the sly, on the sly you did that. <laughs> and then um I think I think me and, my, me and my boy Eugene went to um we went to a club in Windsor and Rusty was playing in it. Yeah. And um like, me and him were, like, we were following Rusty hard, like, watching all his Instagram videos, and, like, any set he was doing, we were trying to make it through, innit? Yeah. And I was like, right, I want to be able to do that, man. Like, you know, like, he was shutting down set. Like, he's still shutting down set now, innit? Yeah, but yeah. Back in, like, 2015, he was running things, bruv. Like, literally all over, like, um... Oh, here he like, comes. He joins as well. As soon as you tell him. As soon as you say, <laughs> as soon as you say his name, he joins like, it. Yeah, yeah. He was running things, like, in Iron Napa, shutting up, like, black and white and stuff like that, innit? And yeah. it was just, it was mad. So I just thought, you know what? I, I think I woke up one morning, I was like, bro, I'm going to buy a controller, but I'm going to buy a better controller that I have. So I bought this um, Denon MCX8000 or whatever it's called. And it's, it's, a, it's a professional controller, four channels, whatever. Bought the thing, and it got delivered, and I was still living with my ex at the time, innit? <clears throat> and then it got delivered, and then I set it all up in the front room, and then I had to, like, she started moaning about, like, she started moaning about the, the music, and I had to plug into the speakers. Then yeah. she was like, oh, can you put it in your headphones? So I was trying to mix. Can you put it in your headphones? <laughs> you know what I mean? So you know, you know, you know on the little knob, you can change it so you yeah, can hear, yeah, yeah. hear the master out of the headphones. And I was doing that. I was like, bro, this is dead. So the next day, I went to work and I filed the, um, the refund for a minute. We're going to say divorce papers. <laughs> <laughs> I filed the, uh, I done the um the refund papers in it, yeah. And I started packing all the stuff, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this, man. I rearranged the spare bedroom, yeah, and I made it into my little studio thing, innit? Yeah. <laughs> then, I, then that's when I released my um welcome back mix, 
And then, yeah, it was like December, I was like, you know what, I'm going to try and take this seriously, in it. So then um, I set up my Instagram, and then that was it. And then I got my, I started working, what was it? I got my first set, well, pub, like, pri- uh, public set in a gym, Buzz Gym in Slough. Yeah. And um, I was gassed, in it. They emailed me, they were like, yeah, man, we'll do this. Bro, £10 an hour, in it. You £10 know? an hour? <laughs> You're lying to me, £10 an hour. Uh, uh, £10 an hour, man. But you know what you got? I just thought, you know what I mean? I just thought, because basically, it's all well and good DJing in your room, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's dead. It, like, if you're not in front of people, mm. do you know what I mean? So I just took it. And then what I was doing after work, so I was working 8 till 4. Then I'd go home, shower up and stuff like that. And then I'd drive down to the gym, carry my control. The controller was heavy, but I had a massive flight case in it. Carrying it from this car park, I had to carry it in. DJ for three hours. Mm. And then, um, yeah, just bounce home, innit? But I did that for a quite a long time. Yeah. And then, um, then that was it, man. Like, obviously, there's a lot more, but that's how I got into DJing. So, basically, it was pretty much my brother that put me on it. And then, like... And you just kind of took it from there, basically. Yeah. And then I remember I remember, like, I remember sitting in bed, yeah. When, th- when things started to kick off. So, when I got my first res- residency in Maidenhead, I remember things started to kick off. And I was, I was sitting in bed with my ex. And I was like, listen to me. You have now to tell me if you don't want me to do this DJ thing, innit? And she goes, do what you want. The rest is history, fam. <laughs> yeah, so that's why right. that's why you got your own place. That's the that's why you got your own place. Yeah, nah, nah. But like, any, advi- <laughs> any, any, any advice I'd say to anyone in this chat now, bro, if you want to do something, just do it, man. Don't let no one hold you back because, you know what I mean? Now, even even Hirsty was telling me uh, that, like, he took out 20 years because of ghosts. Like, he was saying, bro, don't do that. Like, he was literally saying, like, like, obviously not girls are, like, the problem, but I'm just saying, like, you know. Nah, like, like anyone, even if anyone, it's not, not just girls or girlfriends, isn't it? Like, if anyone's like, oh, no, nah, I don't think you should do it, like, go do it and then find out, like, fail yourself. If, like, find out for yourself if it's not for you, in it. <clears throat> yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, man, it's, it's, it was crazy. So, so yeah, what was your, what, so after your first residency, like, what kind of happened after that? Like, how did you get all your, like, you know, walkabout reading and... Roll Holloway, all of that. All, of that <laughs> yeah, yeah. all these fucking things are best stories behind them, innit? <laughs> uh, so my first residency, uh, so, my, so my brother started a company called Get Social. Yeah. And he, um, he launched this, um, what is this? This old school garage event. And I was like, raw man, like, let me let me jump on that. So I was, a D, I was like the resident DJ for that. Um, so that was, so we, we threw the um, old school garage event, sold it out was fucking it was sick but because it was my first public set in front of like over 100 people so i had the set laid out mm-hmm. one to fucking whatever because yeah, i don't yeah. i don't really know old school garage that's too tough in it so i i had it all laid out but i shut down the set like i did the thing then from that um the company got moved into this club called uh pictures mm-hmm. in maidenhead so then I started, so, but what, what would happen is we'd throw an event and then we'd go there to an after party. Yeah. And then from then, I got a residency there. Um, and then I was, I was a resident there Friday and Saturday at this club. It was kind of dead. Don't get, me, like, like, don't get me wrong. It was kind of like, there was no more than 50 people in there. But it was a residency in it. Mm. And then, um, long story short, fucking... Basically, I started linking the fucking manager's daughter, uh, sister, and <laughs> what? I started linking what? the manager. I, I started linking the manager. I started linking the manager's sister. Uh, uh, so you're actually doing the bad news <laughs> right now. Wait, no, basically, I just started chatting to him, and then, then he found out, and then he pretty much booted me as a resident. A resident, anyway. Oh, I'm not surprised. It, I'm like, <laughs> not surprised. <laughs> it was, it was fucking peak. And then at that point, because you know, basically that was my money. I was getting peas in it. I was getting quite a lot of money. Yeah. Um, Friday and Saturday. Then obviously that just, I just it was tough. Mm. I was like, bro. But then also I was like, bro, fuck it, toothbrush. And so I was probably, I remember being there like, shit, man. I thought it was like, I literally thought it was like the end of my life. You know what I mean? I had, I had this residency and I was like, and then it, then it bro, you messed it up. It's a go again. You messed it up again. <laughs> <laughs> basically, um, there's a pattern here with you. <laughs> I was fuming, but then um. Yeah, someone, was, someone, someone sat me down and was like, listen to you, yeah. you're a hard DJ in it. Like, you can easily go out and get like get another thing in it. So what I was doing, putting content out on um, Instagram, 
and stuff like that. And obviously, I was basically what I do is I email, I find a batch of venues, and I just email them all or message them on Facebook. Yeah. And then one sound come back. Um. So then that's that sort of got that got me Raw Holloway, and then that also got me that also got me Walkabout. Yeah. And a few others. So I was doing a quite, and oh, sorry, Yates and High Wickham as well. So I was, so I, I kind of have three residencies in it. So then, yeah, so that's how I kind of got. So I, that, yeah, so the first residency was pictures, left that, <laughs> and then thought my life was over. And then, <laughs> and then all this other stuff came in. Yeah. And now, now I'm still at, obviously, <clears throat> Raw Holloway, I'm still at Walkabout. Well, Yates, I quit because it was too much. Because obviously, yeah. Doing three, four residencies in a week as well as full time working nine to five is hard. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You're like, it's fucking hard, bro. Trust me. So what? Um, so with like the university stuff, like, is there un- any other universities you like to DJ at, or is it just like Royal Holloway for you? That's. You know, yeah, like <clears throat> Royal Holloway is like my home. Isn't it? It's yeah. like it's like my home, man. Like everyone there kind of just greets me with open arms, isn't it? Everyone is just so, like everyone, everyone knows me in it. And everyone makes sure when they come in, fist pump me, wave to me, do whatever. Mm. So I don't, I think I'd like to play at um, Bruno University. Um, I was supposed to be playing there, but obviously quarantine fucked up. Yeah. So um, any others? I don't really know in it. I've con- I contacted Bear Unis in it, um, Southampton, fucking Portsmouth, all these other ones, but not, no one yeah. got back to me in it. But I wasn't. I wasn't heartbroken because fucking I had um, Raw Holloway in it. Mm. Like Raw so Holloway. What's, um, what's kind of been the highlight for you so far? The whole, what well, the whole DJ or Raw Holloway? Yeah, like yeah, yeah, the, on, in DJ. <coughs> Raw Holloway. So my highlight was when I got the main set to support um, Young <laughs> T and Young T and Bugsy yeah. at Raw Holloway, and when that was when I did my first set in the main room. With over yeah, over a thousand people in it, mad. <laughs> <laughs> it looked crazy. It looked crazy. Mad. <laughs> but because I, I was doing the um, I've been doing Tommy's the smaller room. I think it's capacity of four hundred for yeah. about a year, year and a bit. And then, like I, st- I stay humble with it. Innit? Like <clears throat> I, I'm not gonna be like I'm not gonna be in my small room. Like I should be in the main room. You know what I mean? Like mm. it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Innit? So I was humble. I was always shutting down the thing, and then they gave me the opportunity in it. Yeah. And yeah, I obviously met Young T and Bugsy, and I also got to sh- showcase my talent in front of more of the uni because in Tommy's it's the urban room, innit? So only the uh, like obviously the people that like urban uh, come in there, but I got to showcase the thing to everyone. Mm. So I mean, and then my the manager said that's the that's the most amount of people he's had in there past I think it was half two. I still I still yeah. had full room at half two with fifteen minutes of work. That's crazy. Obviously, that's crazy. Yeah. The whole, the, the whole, with DJing, when I'm, when I'm the DJ for the whole night, the flow of things is mad. <clears throat> but I'll, I have, there needs to be a, a flow to my DJ set, or I, yeah. otherwise I, I can't, I can't function, like, I can't DJ properly, you know. Um, what, what kind of makes your set unique to other DJs? Ha, you know, I knew you were going to ask me this question, and I tried preparing it, innit? <laughs> you know what, yeah, like, I try and not, I try and not, just play, you know, during prime time. Yeah. Not just shut down fucking God's back. Not God's back. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Sicko Mo Mo Bamba. I will throw it back. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I'll go deep into my archives. You know, like some some people will only go in the archives when it's um, warm up. Warm up or like come down, like slow down. Yeah, yeah. I'll play some old school stuff mid set because what because I, I love old school in it. So obviously, yeah. I want to give the crowd. What I love in it, so I'll throw in some old school stuff because when you drop in that unexpected shit, yeah, that's when the crowd is like, "Raw, who's this?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, every DJ can run tunes from ninety BPM, switch it to eighty, switch it to seventy BPM. Anyone can do that, and he can just play the bangers from two thousand BPM. But when you throw it back a little bit, and they're like, "Raw, remember this tune when we were growing up?" That's when they'll remember you in it. Mm. So with me, the I think me being unique is throwing in them. Alternative bangers in it from way yeah. back. You know what I mean? And obviously, with my little, obviously, I'm not the only one I could do tone play in it, but having the courage to be able to do it in front of a big crowd. And yeah, doing... do you think so? Like, do you think like you've 
proper mastered it where if let's say you got a massive gig in front of like two thousand people, you do that like you do a mad tone play. Yeah, because that's what because when you do that tone play, everyone will be like, bro. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. basically, when when I'm about to do a trick or something like that, but I start shaping hard. I start getting yeah, better. Mess it, isn't it? Yeah, man. Like I remember I done um I, I a video on my Instagram and I done um the box the bow that yellow and I did it and walk <laughs> yeah. about. I did it there. I was there, shook, but I've done it so many times in it. So I was like, fuck it. But, so I wouldn't really bust a trick that I've just learned the day before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remembering, remembering where all the keys are on the pads is a myth. Like, <laughs> like I did the what was it the box yesterday when I did I did the first of the chorus. So not the yeah. first, the verse. Trying to remember that myth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so yeah, so who yeah. kind of inspired you then to like you know? Not just the tone plays, but to kind of take your DJ to the next level. So, I went to go see, what was it? Um, my boy Times 2, shout out Times 2, I don't know if he's in the, in the, um, the chat. So, I went, he um, invited me up to Serato, um, Serato headquarters. Yeah. So, I went up there. So, it's in, yeah. So, I went to his house in there, which was chilling, chilling for a bit, playing uh, playing his <laughs> And basically, do you know about the Splicer? Do you know about the Splicer fucking mode? And, um, yeah, yeah. Bro, that guy is like a magician. Yeah, he's, he's still in the chat. He's still in here, yeah. The magician. The way he fucking masters them pads is a mad thing. So I was chatting to him in it, and it's like, I think, I can't remember if he asked me, he was like, no, no, wait, hang on. So I saw him play, and then he did a, he went and done a routine um, at Serato headquarters. And yeah. The way he was transitioning through these tunes, yeah, I was like, raw. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, I was thinking to myself, I'm just a basic DJ. Mm. You know what I mean? Compared to that, so from that day on, I then learned, how, like, kind of learned how to use the slice of things. I, I think I used yeah. it on my video. And then I also figured out how to do tone play. And then that's why I started doing scratching as well. Because I don't really want to be ordinary. Do you know what I mean? Like, the whole Instagram knows I'm a bit <laughs> fucking odd because I fucking yeah. my cat 24-7 in there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But, like, I want to be a bit out of the ordinary. I want people to come to my steps and be like, fuck, remember when he done this? Remember when he done that? So that's why I've learned the scratching stuff. I've learned all these different things. and Because so Sorato has bare shit in it. People just, mm. don't know how to, people just don't know how to use it. Crazy. So I think, yeah, the person that inspired me, got me to do it, is times two. And then, obviously, from then on, seeing... DJ Puffy doing his Red Bull freestyle stuff. Um, I see seeing that cat, man. <laughs> um, and then obviously DJ EZ. Yeah. You know what I mean? like, like when he does his. <clears throat> EZ is crazy as well with his like Q button work as well. Right. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's mad. So, yeah. So, like, yeah. So, the person, obviously, the person that inspired me to do more stuff was Times Two. And then obviously seeing all the other DJs scratch it. So, even like Max Denner. Yeah. Yeah, Matt Denon does scratching and stuff like that, and I was watching him trying to figure out how to do it in it. So you can't just watch someone; you have to go learn it from scratch. So that's yeah. why I've done these tutorials from DJ Angelo, and obviously now I've got a little bit better. But now I need to take it to that next level to get even better in it. Mm. Do you think your scratching's help having vinyl? Um, do you know what? I I don't really know because I didn't really do it on my CDJs. Yeah. You know what I mean? I can't really. So when I go back to walkabout, my CDJs are there. When I go back to walkabout, I'll be able to tell you there because I'll be okay. able to, I'll be on there. But with the vinyls, <laughs> because the the plat is basically I can't really explain it, but it, it is it is I think I think I think it is a lot better because I was trying I was trying to scratch my CDJs way back when, but I yeah. gave up because I'm very impatient in it. Like, Same, I'm not, I, like <laughs> after four try after four or five times, if I can't do it, I'm like, okay, bye. I'm gonna yeah. give you a break. If I, can't, if, I can't, if I can't, trust me, I get very frustrated when I can't use <clears> it, man. Like, Especially so. when you're releasing mixes as well and you've messed yeah. it up like twice already in the first five Bruh. minutes. You're like, oh, Bruh, <laughs> like, trust me, when I, when I mess up stuff, yeah, or when I can't do something, it's just like, if you like, trust me, if people in the chat know me, <clears> it's a bigger player. If people, if people in this um chat know me, they know that, like. When I want to be able to do something or learn something, yeah, I'll do it yeah. because I hate being sh I hate being shit at stuff in it. Mm. Yeah, it's um. So after quarantine, do you want to kind of expand your residencies and everything like that, and like explore different 
areas of UK or, you know, clubs, or do you want to just kind of stick with what you're doing? No, um, so I'm happy, I'm happy at Walkabout because I've, I feel like I've grown mm. Walkabout into what it yeah. is today, not to be big headed or nothing, but I've grown it into a, not just a commercial club. It's got a bit more urban flavor in it now, isn't it? So like, you've got more urban people that like urban music coming to the place now, isn't it? So the place is busy. Um, so like, I, I'd like to keep running Walkabout, but I, then I, I also want to, want to be able to showcase my stuff around the UK, but basically what I feel is master your area first and then expand out. Because yeah. cause I when I first started, I was like, because obviously I follow their Birmingham DJs in it. And you, you see how they always always shutting down the arcade and stuff like that. Like, I was yeah, like, 101 and all of that, it's just yeah. crazy. Like. So I, was like, I was always like, bro, I want to go down to Birmingham. I remember one of my targets one year was like DJ in Birmingham in it. Yeah. But I was like, like, why would they choose me up in Birmingham? Like, they got bear DJs up there, innit? Yeah. So I was like, you know what, let me take a step back. Let me master down here first, innit? Let me shut down down here. Let me <clears> shut down my areas first. And then eventually, when I'm putting down content or when I'm shutting down these places, I'll get picked up eventually, innit? Mm. You've got to keep grinding and stuff like that. Obviously, I, I network with bear people. Bear people all around the fucking country, innit? Yeah. So I've got contacts and stuff like that. But with me, I'm just patient with it, innit? Too many people want to go because I don't. I'm not. I'm because some DJs will try and jump it too hard. Then, yeah. they'll, they'll, like, say for instance, they'll start DJing. They learn how to beat match in week one. And then in week two, they want to go DJ in a club in Birmingham. They go to Birmingham and they're shit. Then what? Do you know what I mean? Then you're gonna. Then you're gonna feel. Sh- then you're gonna feel shit. Then you're gonna <clears> be back to square one in it. So with but me, you think that's how the game is kind of run now? Like the, the DJ, the DJ game now is mad. It's like. I like it's it's like every, everywhere is saturated with DJs, isn't it? Yeah. And I was like, Especially London, man. Like London. You know, what like what day they were saying yesterday? Like even like just London is just crazy. Like you know, what? everywhere you go, every shop, bar, restaurant, I don't know, whatever. There's something. Yeah. yeah. Like I've been to a few events in um in London, and like the deep like. The, I don't even want to get into it. The DJs ain't great in it, and but you know, you know, as long as when you're you go to these places and you know you're sick, yeah, and you know you're you know you're better than DJ, but you gotta keep stay humble with it because like at the end of the day, they know people, they know yeah, people, they know they're, people they're, yeah. they're in that place. Like, do you know what I mean? Like the the thing that bugs me is when I go to a rave and the flow of the night, like the the warm up <laughs> and the main set, and it ain't done right in it. Yeah, like I've been to I've been I've gone to a, a set before. And they they in one hundred was played at quarter past ten. That's not even who plays that at quarter past ten anyway. Do you know what I mean? It's it's just like and you know what you know what's mad as well? Like the dance floor there there was bare girls in the place. Yeah. Bare girls. And um See that's your weakness. <laughs> me, what are you talking about, man? <laughs> no, <it's not. laughs> there's um there was bare girls in the place, but like they weren't dancing. Because yeah. the war- the warm up wasn't done properly, in it. and then you know what? Like, so I clocked something here. Yeah. So when when what they one hundred dropped here, yeah, one of the man them from the like some, some random guy, he heard the tune, stepped forward, but then he realized that it wasn't even the time for it to be played either, because there was no crowd, there was no there was no like no crowd. He was he wasn't drunk enough. Yeah, you know what I mean the timing just wasn't right, mm. and then the then. Then it just switched back to another shit tune. Do you know what I mean? Like, you need to have the, you need to build up the night, man. The night is a fucking journey, bro. Do you know what I mean? Bro, you're getting baited in the comments right here. Allow it, man. <laughs> 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 like, it's it's long, man. Trust me. Like, so um, yeah, yeah, carry on, carry on. Nah, like the flow, the flow of the night just needs to be executed right. Which is with me. Warm up needs to be done right. <clears throat> Main set needs to be done right, and the, the cool down needs to be done right. I don't want to be hearing fucking drill at fucking five to three when door shut at three o'clock. When because that, cause that's when beef starts. When it, when the you know what I mean? Literally, when people go, oh yeah, can you play uh, this tune quick, like real quick? There's ten minutes left. Oh, <laughs> mad man, requests. So yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm go, gonna go on to that. Yeah, so request like, how do you deal with the? What's the worst one you got, and how do you deal with that? And like, 
what do you say? Are you the type to go? You know, you know what? I was playing, I was playing Bashman in um, Walkabout, and someone come up to me and asked, you know, um, I was playing Bashman, I can't remember what it was, I can't remember what it was, and someone asked me to play Queen, so it's got me now. Yeah. I was, like, I was like, how can you even, like, do you know what I mean? You can't even, that just doesn't even make sense. It doesn't even go with the, like, it doesn't even go with the whole set there. Like, it just doesn't make any sense, man. Like, what time I, was, do you remember what time it was? I don't know. Like, I play Bashman a bit deeper into the night in it because, like, all the Bashman lovers come a bit later. So I know, like, so I've got the time, I've got the time in right with Walkabout. I know yeah, yeah. when to play stuff. Um, but, yeah, with requests, yeah, like, with me, they'll come to the booth, they'll ask me, I'm like, yeah. As long as, like, as long as they're, like, as long as I say, yeah, it's fine. If it, if it fits with the, the genre, I'll play it. Because sometimes people come up to me and they're like, they're like, I'll play it. So I'm like, shit, I forgot I had that tune in it. Yeah, and I'll yeah, drop it yeah. in it. But then when it's just outrageous bullshit, I just like, go away. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, uh, what's, your, what's your, like, biggest tip you've got for We Love for, for playing a tune? Biggest tip? Oh, uh, 20 pounds. Nothing, nothing too major. What well, was it? A wheel up for to play a tune? It was a wheel up, wheel up, wheel up. The guy, the guy that literally dashed the top of money and was like, <laughs> <laughs> just quick, just quick one, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, man, I'm with her. My money pull up a joke, man. Like, obviously, there's DJs getting fees. I've like, seen people get bare <laughs> money, bro. Like, even, like, obviously, it's a bit different, but I was saying, like. You know, when I see on videos and like stuff like that, like strip club DJs, bro, like they're getting like two hundred quid just to play one song. In it, like, and, one and, song. And you know what's mad? You were probably gonna play that tune anyway. Yeah, like, yeah, like, true. Like, 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 as in, like, the, sorry, the, uh, if, if you get uh, money to re- request, uh, if you get money to play a song and you're gonna play it anyway, mad. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, it's diff- Obviously, it's different if you never had, if you never even wanted to play that song, was doesn't fit. Or, but if you were actually gonna play it, it's a bit, <laughs> you know, blessing in disguise there. Yeah. So, um, like with with overseas gigs, have you done any, or like, would you want to do any after? Like, what's what's the plan? After, obviously, um, like after quarantine, we don't know. But overseas, um, so I had a few things lined up this summer, but obviously, things are things are um, things are a bit off now because obviously, uh, quarantine and stuff like that. Other commitments coming up now, and it's so I can't really fly away yeah. too much, too tough now, and it. So I'm just um, with overseas. I'm not really like you know. Do you know what it is? Yeah, like I was always like, oh yeah, I want to go play in INAP. I want to go play in this. But like, unless unless someone calls me up to go DJ out there and pay for my flight, I don't see the point because I I can't really be bothered to like. I feel like I can't really do a season anymore because season yeah. seasons were for. 18, 19, I, what I feel is 18, 19, 20 year olds in it. Bro, I'm nearly 28, man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I don't really but, have... like, do you, not, do you not think it will give you more exposure to go out there and do it? It will, it will. Like, I thought, like, cause my plan was to go out for a few a few weeks. But as I said, commitments in it, like, yeah. I mean, I can't, like, yeah, obviously, with, like, I still work full time in it. So I can't just dust out for, like, a month. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I've got a yard, you know what I mean, stuff like that. I've got to make sure that everything over here is still fine. So, um... Is there, a place, is there a place you want to DJ at, though? Um, Ocean Beach. Is it Ocean Beach? Ocean yeah, Beach, o- Ocean, yeah, Ocean Beach, yeah. Like, places like that in it, and, like, um, Marbella. But then, it's because I've just seen the DJs that I follow shut it down all the time, so I'd love to go do it in it. But mm. with them places, you need to be <clears throat> plugged massively, man. You know what like, I mean? what I was saying yesterday as well, like, with Rusty doing, like, Sisu mm. and all of them places at Mar Bear, that's what, that's kind of, that's one of the aims to do. Like, because mm. those places, the vibe there is crazy. Like, so with that, you need to just, in order to get to that, you need to be networking with people. Yeah, it's networking. It's, 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 not, it's, it's who you know in it. Because yeah. if, you, if you don't network with people, how are you expected to get to Ocean Beach? Mm. You know what I mean? Like, pe- people might sit in their bedroom and be like, "Raw, I can make by X, Y, Z. I should be there." But like, if you don't know people, and you're not, and you're not like, with most DJs, yeah, most DJs don't really talk to many people. Most DJs are quite like cozy in their own boxes, so yeah. it's, it's hard for us to go out and talk to people. Like with me, with me, yeah, I 
I'm like an, I'm a proper introvert in it. Like I hate, I want to say I hate, <laughs> like me in social situations, yeah, I struggle. So me socializing with people I don't really know, I find it hard, but mm. it's a thing you need to overcome in it. Definitely. Overcome it, man. Like sometimes, like, like if I don't know the person, they come talk to me about stuff. I want to start getting hot sweats, man. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's because, like, I just don't, like, I just, I don't really feel comfortable in social situations. It's weird, mm. man. Like, I mo- like, obviously, I had a, like, I've been living on my own for this time. And when you're, like, on your own for so long, and you get thrown in a social situation, it's like, raw. Like, how do you do it? But then people are like, oh, you DJ in front of 500 people. It's different. Because, it's different. because Yes, yeah. Yeah, to, to be honest with me, I'm just in my booth on my true, own. True, true, true. Doing my thing in it. But then if you try to come talk to me in the booth, I'll seize up. You won't, you, like, you won't, you won't be able to, like, as well as I can't really, I can't concentrate. Yeah, I don't like people in a booth. Bro, I don't I like people in a booth. Because you know what it is, yeah? People come talk to you, have a conversation with you, yeah? But you have about, with me personally, because I change tunes quick, yeah? I have about one minute to figure out, not even that. I went there. But yeah, about a minute to figure about out the five next. Five seconds. Yeah, then a minute to figure out the next three songs I'm going to play. I always, I'm always three songs next minute. Yeah. I mean, so, I always, <laughs> so when you're coming to the booth to try to chat to me about your life, you need, you need to go. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> so basically, I'm not, I, so basically, I'm not invited into the booth now. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it's different. It's different. When it's no, man, because man, you know I'm going to, I'm going to be, <laughs> nah, you'll be you putting you off. Nah, it's, 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 when, when it's man them, yeah, and, Especially if it's another DJ, they know, they know not to talk to you yeah, during the transition, course, yeah, yeah. bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, cause, yeah, man. When you're trying, these people trying to touch you in a during the transition, I've had people, yeah. When I'm trying to, I'm trying to um, blend, um, blend in the tune, yeah. And I've got people tapping my shoulder. Fuck off, man. Do you know what I mean? Have you, like, have you, have you had like when someone's knocking the uh, laptop? Like, I've had someone not literally legit just smack my laptop and it's right. like coming off the stand and I'm like oh my god like and I'm brother. trying to mix it at the same time like literally I'm in the mid- middle of a mix brother <laughs> like people getting too close because obviously all of our DJ equipment is expensive man yeah. like laptop like MacBooks ain't no joke you know what yeah, I mean yeah. and but they think they break easy they break so easy man so one little drop of um water I think I was talking I think I was talking to uh, DJ Connor G yeah he yeah. goes to me, he was in a club that was hot. He goes, a bit of condensation dropped onto the um the track pad. Mouth not working. Is that it? Literally that, just that like it. You know what I mean? And then he said he was gonna take it to Mac and they were gonna charge him four hundred pounds. My yeah, man got, yeah, 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 yeah. My, my man friends got, yeah, my friend literally touched his screen to like open the laptop up mm-hmm. and the whole bottom of the screen just like started um, you know, the LEDs all gone and yeah. they said four hundred quid. Yeah, it's a myth. But then Connor G went to eBay or Amazon, got this he got something for seven pounds, fixed himself, and his laptop's mm. still running now. Um, oh, <clears throat> what was the question? I can't remember now. <laughs> oh, I even forgot. <laughs> as well. as well. um, oh, oh, knocking knock, knock, knock lap, uh, laptop being knocked. Um, yeah, anyone that comes near my equipment, I get very agitated. Like, I was in a club not long ago, and a woman come up to me telling me to play this. Oh, it's okay. Play it, and then. <laughs> and then you know what she done yeah she like pushed the laptop to then talk to me mm. I was like don't touch my shit I'm having the laptop shut fully it would have locked up the music <laughs> do you know what I mean like yeah. like I've ne- like touch wood they don't understand <laughs> it's like, like I'm not being rude but like they just don't understand because like they come into the booth with all their drinks mm. you know like Putting it next to the decks, and I'm like, what are you, know, you doing? You know what, mad, yeah? They dr- if they spill the drink, yeah. What are they gonna say? Oh, sorry. Then yeah. what? Well, where's then my what? P- yeah, where's my peas? Run my peas. Because you know, then what? Then, then, the music <laughs> cuts out. That's it. The music yeah, when cuts they, out. What's when the music when the music cuts out, yeah, they're gonna run. You know what I mean? <laughs> they're gonna run, and then and then they're gonna jump in the crowd, and be like, boo, the DJ. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, Natty, I don't even know why Natty's chatting. He he gets wines in the booth. I don't know what this guy's talking about. Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he's that t- he's that type to get wines in the booth. <laughs> like, but like, no, I, I I literally unless it's some a really close friend of mine or anything, I really can't have someone in the booth because yeah, man, I just man. like my own personal space while I'm DJing. Yeah, man, like, I like to just do my thing and just yeah, yeah. Yeah, man. Oh, so how, how are you on the uh, how are you on the mic? 
Like, are you I've, comfortable with just getting on a mic or? I've improved. So when I started, I wouldn't touch a mic in it at all. Hang on, I need to get up here. Um, I wouldn't touch a mic in it. I think oh, you know what I think. Is that De- yeah, I think Dems is the same as well. Yeah, I wouldn't really touch a mic. And then basically, I got thrown into a situation. No, sorry, at Walkabout when I started, my manager was like, "You need to use a mic." And then I remember, I remember like, um, I think one of the basic things was like, oh, the um, the the small bar is now open. So I just got to go on the mic and be like, small bar is now open. And I I was I was coming like um. You know, like in um, super supermarkets in there when yeah, they, yeah. they do an announcement, it'll be like, yeah. ding, ding, ding. The small bar is now open. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, and I'd, I'd be like that in it. And then, um, but then before I go do it, I'm shaking. Do you know what I mean? I can't. Mm-hmm. And then. I hate then going I, like, oh, there's 10 minutes left or something like yeah, that. Like, or, I, you know. I don't really like doing it. I didn't really like doing it. And then my manager just kept telling me, you need to do it. You need to do it. And I was like, right, you know, yeah, if I don't do it, she might get rid of me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, I started doing it a bit better. Then, you know what I just did? Yeah, it's a bit gay, but I just got my mic in my um in my DJ room, and when I'm running tunes, just say random shit in it because you basically I was I was reading up on it. If you have a few go-to sayings to say, then it's easier. Um, like you know, like people will shout like, "Ah, oh, everyone, I'm a good night tonight." If you just have that in your in your <clears throat> vocab or whatever, when you go to say it, you won't be shook to say it. Because I've started bare times on the mic when I'm trying to yeah. say something a bit out of, out of ordinary, like birthday shout-outs, yeah. Like, I just say, well, a big shout-out for Alex in the building tonight. Yeah. I just mm. say that because that's my go-to thing now. It might be repetitive to people that come in there all the time, but for me, it's easy and I won't start up. Yeah, so, with yeah. me, so with me, I would just be, so the, the advice I'd give is practice. And then what I'd done was Royal Holloway were hosting a <laughs> night I said to my manager, can I be, can I be the host for the, for the night? So I just jumped on the stage in front of a thousand people and started doing it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because yeah, yeah. you throw yourself in the deep end, but then when you do it again, like, you're like, bro, I just stood in front of a thousand people and just chat bullshit. And it was fine. You know what I mean? Bare people get shook. Bare DJs get shook that they don't like the sound of their voice or they don't like... Yeah. They, they, they think they're going to sound gay or they're going to sound cringy. That's the thing. I don't like the sound of my voice. So, like... And also, it, it comes to a point where um, you either speak too much or you don't. And, like, yeah. <clears throat> so Preds had just joined. And I, I remember I've seen Preds Yeah, big DJ up Preds, man. Preds my guy. When still. I was much younger. And, like, he's, like, a pro- he's proper on the mic. Like, this guy runs the mic. Like, um, he, yeah, he shuts down on Rays, bro. I see it. Like, he always, runs the mic. That's what I mean. And I, like, with me, I, the thing is, like, I can't run the mic too much because I, I like doing stuff in the decks, man. I like doing all my stuff. So... I can't have a. I can't really do stuff with one hand. Yeah. You know what I mean, so I might have to get one in my hand. <clears throat> See, for me, like, so Dylan, Dylan, yeah, yeah, I know, but I don't like. He said, um, I've been calm with the mic, like, ish, but like, I just don't know what to say. It's just like. You know what it is? Like I said, yeah. just, you know what it is? Just have a few go-to things to say and yeah. build upon it. Then, yeah. yeah so that I got, yeah. So I threw myself in the deep end with Roll Away, and yeah. then I then just started. When I did when I did the set with Young Team Bugsy, I just got on the mic. He was ready for Young Team Bugsy to come out tonight. You know what yeah. I mean? Simple shit like that. And um, it's stuff like that, man. You just need to basically you do it a few times, and you realize no one gives a fuck about your voice because one, they're yeah. fucked. They're fucked out of their face. They're hard, They're probably not gonna remember it. But nine times out of ten, if you say the right things, they'll react and be like, you know what I mean? Or yeah, like, yeah. like yeah, man. If my mic work is. It's a skill in itself. It is a skill in itself. Like hosting is like host. I I, I rate host highly, bro, because the way they give they, they bring the energy to the thing the whole night. Like DJ DJ Specs from Oxford, yeah. He hosted one of my sets in um in Oxford when I was supporting Jay Silver, and he hyped up the crowd mad. Do you know what I mean? He's got the confidence to do it. Like you do it a few times. You get your sayings, and then you just fucking run with it, man. Because you just realise that people, people don't actually care in the crowd. Yeah, I think it's just confidence. Because like for me, it was like I, I'd get on for jokes, but I wouldn't like. It's just like I don't know what to say. It's just like, you know, I don't, I don't really know. Sometimes you're like, oh, is everyone enjoying it, or you know, alcoholics in the building, or something like that. But yeah, man, you know what? Like, you figure out like the venue you're in first. 
and then you just yeah like I think what Fred said just don't <coughs> overthink it if you overthink yeah. it yeah that's when you'll start that's when you'll shit yourself yeah, and it, yeah. I think mean, Natty says there Natty says there um, alcohol does a lot brother yeah alcohol, alcohol does me, so much does listen so to me much. yeah I do I don't touch alcohol in the booth no more yeah <laughs> because one time I spilled equipment so this was back in my residency in, in Maidenhead I yeah. spilled equipment I uh, spilled so, des- uh, desperados all over the right deck with three hours to go. Yeah? Yeah. Bruv, when I tell you I was, I had to just use the left-hand side, what I was doing, I was playing a tune, pressing echo quick, selecting the next tune, and just, just taking the echo off. Just and then it on, yeah. Bruv, I was shook. And after that, I just didn't really, I just don't, I just don't drink it. I was always like, oh, yeah, I play so much better when I fucking, um, when I drink. Then I'll go I do and don't. I do and don't. Sometimes I just wheel up a track for no reason. Like I have more. <laughs> I I have more fun. Yeah. When, when I'm drunk, but yeah. my DJing is sloppy. It's sloppy in it. It's sloppy. Like, it is so yeah, sloppy. Yeah. Because like, like on, on on the mic, it's probably better if you're drunk. Not drunk, but like if you're drinking. So like... it's, it's 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 a lot easier. Yeah. It's, it needs instant doubles if you just say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, yeah, I just don't drink anymore. Like, I've had, I think I've done, I, I don't know how many times I've I don't know why you're before. lying. You're always drinking, man. Brother, you mad. Hey, I've got to drive the week. <laughs> every, time, every time I see on your story, after, after like, your set, you're like, oh, I'm not touching alcohol again. Like, what were you doing? Oh, <laughs> man. Like, I, like, I, I, just me, literally, 2019, I think I got drunk, like, Four times. Four You're lying. Times. I swear. I, swear, I, swear, I, swear, I, I, don't, swear. I don't drink. You know, because you know what uh-huh. it is. I, I like to be able to go to my set, yeah. And when it's done, I want to go. I yeah. want to leave. I want to jump in my whip and go, man. Because I want to live to bed. See, you know even Preds is baiting you. Preds is going to you love a drink, bro. I even fucking love a drink, man. These people don't like. Trust me. I like. I like to get drunk. Don't get me wrong. What's your drink? I don't. You know, what? I don't really have one. I'm not like a. I'm not a uh, spirit drinker. I drink. I drink like the Desperados, bro. You know what I mean? Like um, that's not me. That is not me. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not really a um, spirit drinker in it. Like if I drink, I drink brandy. I can drink uh, vodka and stuff like that. Mm. But oh shit! <laughs> you know what? You're getting baited. You're getting baited now. You know See, what, I told yeah. you Bruce, last year. Right, last, year it, yeah. last year, I told you last year. Yeah, last year, yeah right I saw up. on your story right every night. It was right. like, oh, this is not drinking. When I went the whole year, oh my days, I got <laughs> mash up, man. <laughs> I was, I was. But I remember because. I warmed up for ice cream, and I jumped off the decks in it, and then I was like, I was just catching a vibe in it, because I've never really, I've I, I never DJed with them before, I've gone to their yeah. events, but I've never, I did, so I was just vibing behind the DJ booth, yeah, and then, <laughs> and then I think, yeah, Simo jumped on, yeah, then I was just mash up in it, I was just behind the booth, like, wheel it up, man! <laughs> That's was, how it's gotta be, that how it's gotta be. And I, I remember, yeah, I woke up in the morning, yeah, I was finished. Finish, bro. <laughs> like, just drinking bet, like, yeah. Like, I, ah, the fucking Bruce bringing me out, man. <laughs> <laughs> and so, how did how did that uh, whole set come about? Like, did you just um, like DM Simo or who did you DM? So you know they did an introducing stages, uh, introducing rooms. Um, so basically, at all their events, they do this thing called an introducing room. So you message in, and then what you do is you um you either warm up. For them or yeah. you'll have another room for yourself yeah so in attic uxbridge um there's two rooms there's the vinyl room and then there's the main room so i was in the vinyl room. so i i emailed so i think they put a post out on instagram in it and um and then i emailed them then they messaged me saying yeah come through and i done my set done my thing i warmed up i warmed up the room and then yeah i then stayed <laughs> stayed and i was chilling and i went i think i went to their I think I went to another event with them as well. And then I didn't really speak, I didn't really get involved in the introducing things again. And then Simo messaged me in it saying, oh, do you want to come on tour with us? And I was like, rah. <laughs> yeah, so was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was supposed to be um, whole Uxbridge, Manchester. Oh, was that the black, was it black and white thing? Or what was that, yeah. the fresh? I can't remember. What... Yeah, something I can't remember. And then, um, yeah, so I, went, so I went to the whole of them. And then I was supposed to go to Manchester with them to support, um, what's that dual group, man? Um, oh, fuck me, it's called, Bruce will know, man. It's, it's the dual group, oh, it's two of them, man, I can't remember. But um, I, was to, I was supposed to go, but, oh, yeah, it's good, yeah. Um, but I, was to, I was supposed to go then, but I can't 
can't remember, it messed up. I think I had, I think I wasn't going to get back in time for my next step, the next day. Yeah. So I didn't go in. Um, but yeah, I've just kept myself in contact with them anyway, innit? Because obviously, I, oh yeah, have you been to Ice Cream of the Dead? No, that's what I was saying to him yesterday. I need to, I need to come down. I need to come down. <laughs> I'm telling you now, yeah, they're one of the best events I've ever been to, bro. Like, Simo, them man, know how to throw a party. Yeah, he, when he was explaining it yesterday, and like, it was just, Swear it seemed down. so, like, tight. Everything's tight, everything's um, legit. So busy. And you know what, yeah, it's all good vibes as well. Yeah. It's all good vibes, man. It's, it's yeah, man. They, them man know how to throw a party. Man. So, like, whoever was to DJ with them again, man, it's, it's just, it's an honor, it's not, not honor, but it's good, man. Trust me, it's good. It's good to be plugged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good, good. Definitely, like I, I definitely want to like. Even I said to him, like I'll come through to those uh, the rooms, do like yeah. a quick, you know, yeah. thing, and then see if I can get a main set or something like that, or yeah, you know, something like that. Literally, but, message yeah. him, message him after this quarantine, and you'll get you'll get introduced room, man. Do your thing. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, but yeah, because that, that yeah, Steemo is a hard DJ. Like I was watching this thing yesterday, and he was saying like. The way he mixes, he says he's like a smooth mixer, in it. Yeah. Like when he transitions tunes, man, you just don't know. Like that's you know the I mean? thing when he when he because when I was watching some of his lives as well, like the amount of dancehall tracks he knows is crazy. Like it's... <laughs> you know, what's, you know what's magic. After he said that, so I was going through, um, I was going through my dancehall tune. You know what? You know, you know, with me, I've got like a mad OCD with my music library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I've gone. So what? My next thing I'm doing now, is like written on my board. <laughs> it's like I'm going through all my dancehall tunes and writing the rhythms because mm. you know what? Yeah, it's mad how many artists jump on one rhythm. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Was, oh, swear, it's mad. Like you know, like um, oh, you know, dude by Beanie Man in it. Yeah. Where people run up, like run that rhythm. Definitely. And, you know what I mean? So I'm just downloading all that stuff now. So I, I think I downloaded it yesterday. I think I downloaded like 400 tunes yesterday. But yeah. now I've got to go through them all and put the rhythms next to them in it. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Trust me, my my library OCD yeah, is mad. <laughs> well, now I'm trying to sort that out as well. I'm trying to sort that. Um, I deleted all my crates and I'm restarting the whole thing. Like, bro, you know, yeah, you shouldn't delete. Room. You shouldn't delete your whole. You shouldn't delete all your crates. You know, you should do start a new folder and then restart. Don't delete your old ones because, boy, if you need to go DJ again, because you know I mean? with me, I I'm so structured with everything in it, so I need to have. I need to have um everything out in my life. Mm. Mate, my library is a mad thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like art artists is in the right column, the titles in the right the years all sorted out. Trust me, it's, mm. it's, it's crazy, man. Every everything has to be perfect. If I go into my iTunes or my Sarah, I see I I don't see an artist in the artist column, I'll get agitated. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm trying to organize mine like in year order and everything. So like, it's gonna but be long. I've got I've got it sorted out in genre, year, and then kind of BPM as well. I can't um, do B. That's too long. Doing BPM that's so long. Yeah. So like, obviously with Serato, they got smart crates now in it. Yeah. So they had a, they had a good time in it. So I use them a bit, but like my org. So but the thing is with me, like, I'll do one bit of sorting out and then. There's another thing that comes into my head. Like, see, oh, I don't know what to do stuff, but like, see that list, that blue list at yeah. the bottom there? That's all the stuff I need to do in my Serato. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, I've got, every day I'm thinking, I need to do this. Because you know what it is? <laughs> I'll do a set, then I always evaluate my set afterwards. Always. Mm -hmm. I'll go into Serato's history, take the set, put it into a crate, and then run through it. Yeah. Um, And be like, and then just be like, I'd be like, oh, I could have transitioned. I could have done that transition a bit better, or I could have done this song instead of that. So what I'll do then is take that, take that crate, and when I next go to walkabout, um, no, so before I go to walkabout again, put some other songs that I could put that I could play in that set as well. So yeah. have a big, then, then eventually you'll get a crate of tunes that you know that you can play in walkabout or mm -hmm. something. Do you know what I mean? Because that's how I built my um, my, my Raw Holloway. When I start Raw Holloway, they're they're hard on urban in it. But before I went to Raw Holloway, I was only a um, walkabout. So I was doing more commercial stuff. When I went to Raw Holloway, I wasn't too into, like, I wasn't play. I wasn't really in in there with the whole hard urban stuff, like the drill and stuff like that. So what I do is I'll take my set and then I'll go home, fill back up that set, that crate with more songs that they might like, then go back the next week and then play them tunes. It's, it's 
You're so OCD about your whole crate and everything, I, man. I, I have every, <clears throat> every set that I've done. I've got I've got a crate with the date, the venue, and then that set with all the songs in yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can just track back to what I've done. Um, it's 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 sick though, like doing this um <clears throat> new crate thing that I'm doing with like the years and stuff. Because now I'm looking at what years I have more music of, what years I don't have music of, or what genres I don't even have music of. Like, I was just going through it, and, like, 2020, I mean, obviously, we've only had, like, five months, but um, with r and I've got, like, no songs. But with yeah. hip-hop, I've got flipping loads. Or, like, with yeah. dance, so I've got, like, it's weird. But, yeah, yeah. so Denzel just put a question there. Oh. Uh, do you have any favourite genres you love to play as Uh, Old-school R&B, 100%. If I can go to Arabia and shut down, <clears throat> I can play any old school R and B, and not like the bass stuff, like always on time and stuff like that. You know yeah. what I mean? Like when you can throw it back some hard shit, some like good old school R and B, yeah. Then that's what I like. Because I walk about, I tend to always do an old school R and B hour at the end. Just run tunes, old school R and B, man. Because I personally, with me, I think that's the best. I think that's the best genre, man. Yeah. You can't get much better than old school R and B. Said the warm up set. What, what, as in, what genres do I play? Or... Yeah, genre, yeah, maybe genres, I don't know. So, with warm up set, with me, I'd do it, I'd either play, I'd either play songs that have just recently just been released. Like, yeah. I wouldn't, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't play any, like, I, I, I'm pretty, I'm sticking, like, between 80 BP, 82, 82, 95 BPM, new stuff. That no one's really, no one's feeling it. You know, stuff that just, 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 just come out. Um, or I play. Oh, he's saying, sorry, he's saying, um, no, it's like the set you enjoy most or play. Oh, um. What a wonder. Um, 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 I prefer, I enjoy warm up. So I can play, I can play. To be I honest, I prefer, like, it's weird because I prefer, like, let's say if there's three DJs on the night. I prefer like being oh okay let's say four let's say four DJs right I prefer being like the third. You know like, what? I've never I don't think I've ever done a set with like you know like you said three four you know like um in like yeah. our stadium where they have three DJs warm up yeah, yeah. I've never had that I've never had that before yeah. I'm always either coming straight to mid set and bounce yeah. or I've just done the whole set. <clears throat> so I'm, I've done everything in it so I know how to do everything and my most enjoyable bit. Um, what was the last time we were the last question, man? Um, about your crates and stuff, and like, um, you know, oh, oh it's I... a prime time, sorry, prime time, prime time, and all of that stuff. Like, you were yeah. saying you haven't DJed with more than I don't know what you're gonna say. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't really, I haven't really done the whole, oh, there's three DJs on a night, and then, yeah, you know what I mean, like, I've just always done the whole thing myself, or just come in main set and then just bounce to <clears> it, like. <throat> mm. I haven't really done too much. I'd I've done, that. yeah, I've done like three or four DJs yeah. on one night. But to be honest, I prefer if it's just two or one. To be honest, like actually, no, I tell a lie. Tell a lie. I've done an event with eight DJs once. Yeah, like last year, and that was a madness because you know what it is. Not all DJs were running. C- well, at Walkabout, there's no CDJs. Yeah, mm. so everyone had it. So I had my controller. The next man will bring his controller. The next man will bring his controller, innit? Yeah. And everyone's got laptops. And the booth and walkabout small, you know? Like, it's tiny. So, like, that's... Uh, when things ain't organised, and stuff like that, with, you know, with them kind of set, it gets me frustrated, innit? Mm. It's like... It's like, either beforehand, get, rent out some CDJs, and then make sure everyone knows I'm playing CDJs, yeah, yeah. or, like, everyone just play on one controller, man. Like, bro, I've got an SB... SB2 have you got? Yeah, SB1. yeah. SB2, I think. Yeah. And the next man's bringing um, a Pioneer SX3. And that's one. That's got four channels, in it? That's the thing, yeah. That's, <laughs> like, it's massive. It's, it, it's annoying when you get those gigs because, like, you want to just be in a group and you guys, like, just talk about, like, who's bringing what. You bring mm. one deck, everyone just uses that one deck. Or you just bring, or you just use the CDJs, everyone uses the CDJs or something like that. Right. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. What is the equipment? I, I want people... People should get into group, WhatsApp groups and then talk about the songs they're going to say. Yeah, the songs, yeah. Bro. Yeah, so I was going to ask about that. Like, have you had, like, Day Day was saying yesterday, like, you were just like, bro, you've it's had enough now. You've had enough, like, I've had that, like, you know. 
like I said, like I said, I've never really done the whole and yeah. DJ's been warming up before me. So, but I've had it once where I went to a place, I was doing main set. I was supposed to be DJing with DJ Cameo, but he didn't turn up. Um, so then I went in there, I was sat in the corner, and it was a UK funky bashman night. Next genre is yeah. And then I walked in, the dancer was empty, but Mau Man was running all the tunes. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was there like, because like it's such a specialist night, you can't really be running them tunes because what the fuck am I gonna play in it? So then, <laughs> but it was lucky. It was lucky that the night was dead. So when I was when it was my time to play, I was just playing whatever because no one was in there. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. But like, I've 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 been to events where I've been to go support the DJ and they've, and then the DJ before them have run out the tunes. Mm. Like, and it's just like chill, bro. Yeah. Like. It's just like you need to like it's just it's like they don't have a have a big music library in it. Yeah. It's like if, if someone before me is running bare tunes, then I can get out of it because I'll shut down the set regardless in it. Cause I'll just go yeah, deep yeah, into yeah. the crates in it. I'll, That's the you thing I mean? you kind of show like your variety and like multi genre kind of. So That's what I'm saying in it. Like my man can run run all these tunes from 2020 2019, but I'll just go back to 2016 and shut it down. Like no matter. Mm. So, like, with this question, what's one set you dislike doing the most? Uh, one set. I, I think it's more kind of like learning curve, right? What like sets I dislike? Oh you know, yeah, like any set that, that any set that I've been told what to play, I fucking hate. Any any set, yeah, where I'm DJing, everything's going smoothly, yeah, mm. and then a manager or someone comes in the booth and says change the music. Do you know what? I, the, the thing I hate the most, yeah. Is when someone comes up to me and says, "Like the music ain't good enough, yeah. but the the party is pumping." So you know I mean, mm-hmm. and the worst thing I hate as well, yeah, is when someone comes up to me, they're requesting a tune, requesting a tune, and you play it. One, they don't dance, and two, it just fucks the dance floor. Yeah, I knew what I was doing. I was working up to that tune. <laughs> there's certain times where you need to play the fucking tune in it. Like there's certain parts of the night. Where a tune needs to be played in it, and you need as a DJ, you need to be able to read the crowd and do it and drop it. Mm. So I mean, like, so well, for me with sets, I don't dislike. I'm gonna generalize it as whenever a, a manager gets onto me about, like, basically when a manager wants to hear something they want. That they want, yeah. That but I feel want. like it's it's annoying because you're like, look at the crowd, look at you. Did like I pulled these people into the bar as well. Look at your bar. <laughs> look at you know. Look at your revenue and what you want me to change it up. I'll tell you one thing that happened to me, yeah. One venue. I was DJing, shut down the night, dance floor was popping. As I was walking out, the manager stopped me, goes, What happened there? And I was yeah. like, excuse me? <laughs> and he goes, he goes, Oh, you play too much R and B. I was like, What the fuck does that mean? Because <laughs> <laughs> like, I basically the night went, I warmed up with my stuff, I paid because it was a re- it was really commercial in there, and so I paid really commercial stuff. Little bit of, like the the Bay R and B tune, uh, Rihanna work, Rihanna work, murder she work, you know, shit like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I paid the like the Bay hip hop that everyone knows, God's plan, for instance, yeah. And then I wind it down with some old school stuff. Dance yeah. was popping, and then he goes, "You picked too much R and B." I was like, "Okay." And I was like, "But the dance was popping." And he goes, "Yeah, that's the problem." I was like, what? He goes, yeah, there's too many people on the dance floor and not enough people at the bar buying drinks. I was like, fuck it, what's wrong with you, man? What do you want? Like, what do you want? What do you want? So I then said to the person that booked me, I said, I quit. I'm not dealing with this shit. I'm not coming to a place here, shelling out six hours, yeah, for some next man to come tell me that I didn't pay good enough when his dance floor was popping. My job is to keep the dance floor popping, right? Your job's not to to keep everyone at the bar. Like... (laughs) Like it's stupid, man. So that's I think that's the most. Actually, no, that's the most. That's the set I hate the most, man. Like, I was vexed when I come home. I was vexed, bro. I was so angry. <laughs> uh, now, now you saying, do you ever get uh, other DJs in your ear telling you what to play all the time? <laughs> what? I feel like he's it? saying this because he's the type to do that as well. <laughs> I feel like he does this too. <laughs> one one DJ come up. So one guy. So one obviously not saying our names. I ain't, I ain't like that. Yeah. Um, I was I was DJing in the venue, and he I think he DJs there, but I was he, I think he DJs there, but he was I was a guest. Yeah. Um, 
Then he come through. He was like, right, you know what, yeah? I play this at this time, man. You should play this. Brother, go away. <laughs> kept coming back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And he just kept going at me in it. And like, it's like, fuck off, man. Like, yeah, I'm DJing yeah. here. You're not playing tonight. And then that same brother was in another venue. And then he come up to me and goes, I hate to be that guy, but can you play this? Fuck off, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like... What do you know? Like, I bet he would hate if I come up to him and tell him, yeah, to play this would, yeah it's the exact same. I'll, I'll never ever go up to a DJ, yeah, and tell him what to play because I would like, only request, I wouldn't tell him you gotta play this now. Like, I'll, I, I'll just be like, oh, could you, whenever, whenever it's, it's like good to do, can you play this tune if you got it? If not, don't worry. But like, I wouldn't go, you gotta play this right now, it's rubbish, you're set, yeah. or something like that. Mate, I just, I can't stand the people that stand by the, there's people that stand by the booth waiting for you to play their tune, man, and mm. when, when you know when that like, person's in the corner of your eye, in it, Yeah. It's like, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, um, DJ, I think it's James, DJ James? D, D James, yeah. Yeah, DJ, was it, yeah. So, like, he was DJing at Cirque, so, I, my favourite tune, like, is Pop Box, right? So, I, I, I was, obviously, I know he's, like, experienced everything, so I was a bit, scared to even approach him with the tune. I was like, uh, don't even approach him. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was like, oh, bro, like, a DJ as well, bro, like, can you play this? I like this tune. And yeah. then it gets to, like, 2.30, I'm like, and he puts it down, I'm like, thank you. But, like, I don't know, is there a way, like, you would like to be approached? Because I don't really know if they're, like, because it's just, if, like, you have it on your phone, and then you just go, like, could you try play this? And they come up to me, like, respectful, like, oh, what's going on, brother? You play six, man, man. Do you mind if you play this? If it yeah. fits in the genre, I'll play it. So I mean, like, I'll play it, but then I might not play it. So with me, I'll chop through chop tunes quick. If the tune ain't pop it, like, if the tune ain't popping within 30 yeah. seconds, I'm changing it. Yeah. Uh, a guy came up to me, asked me for, this was in a commercial thing, he asked me for um two cups for a mm. here. I dropped it, but then the dance floor started dispersing in it because yeah. people weren't really up to date with that cup music in it. So I changed it quick. Like, I know, I know you want to hear it, but... The DJ, if if the if the crowd ain't feeling it, sorry, I can't really. Do you know what I mean? But then they go. Then also, actually, I don't know. But the thing is with me, I'm a people pleaser. It's bad. Yeah. It's bad. No, man. you're no, bro. You're a girl pleaser. Fuck off, man. <laughs> you say it coming. You say it coming. You say it coming. Fuck in. off. Nah, I'm not, bro, man. Yeah. <laughs> Stop fucking at me in front of all these fucking people, man. Allow it. Bro, uh, I, I'm just looking at your history now, you know, like... Nah, man. Like, because <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm just like, oh, if I drop a tune in the... Nah, that's what, now you can't even be talking, that's him. I don't know why he's talking for. Fucking hell. Nah, because, nah, like, with me, the, the, my, one of my big problems is if, yeah, if the crowd ain't feeling it, then... Because, obviously, as a DJ, you want to play whatever you want to play in it. Mm. Yeah. Um, but then it also goes back <laughs> to... It also goes back to like I have to make sure that the crowd is happy. Yeah. So like that's that's one bad thing about me that I've got to make sure I'm just such a like, people please are in it from fucking way when you're fucking cool thing, man. Mm. <laughs> but, um yeah, so this this question here, do you get nervous when DJing? Not anymore. Um I used to bad. Like I used to go to set shaking, man. Like proper scared. And then it got to a point where I was like I'm good enough in it. Like, mm. like I think Simo always says to me, yeah, believe in your own source in it. Yeah. Um, I know I'm good enough in it. So but, like what's there to be nervous about? Is it nervous yeah. about being in front of people or is it nervous about you performing in front of people? If it's performing in front of people, I'm not let down in it. Like I ain't got a problem with fucking shutting down a set for six hours or an hour or whatever in it. Um I think so nah, for me, I it's nervous. like if if I know there's a big DJ coming on after me, or if there's like some big names in the place, then I kind of get not nervous, but I'm like, okay, right, I actually need to kind of step up the game and show my craft. But like, I've never been the type to be like nervous in front of deep, like what you're saying, DJ in front of just like a like bunch of people in a club. Like, I don't think you know, because if you know you're good, you're good. With, like, with with the, with the whole big name things, yeah, you need to stay like. I don't think humble is the right word. You need to keep it, like, keep it cool. Because, yeah. like, 
what is it? I think Stylo, he um on his podcast he said that one of his he he was uh, he went to a, he went to a, he was doing a set and the DJ before him saw that Stylo was in the building. He yeah. started running bare tunes to to look sick in front of him. Don't do that. Carry on doing <clears> what you're doing, yeah. and the DJ will respect you for what you're doing. If you're doing warm up, yeah, don't start playing all Stylo's pre- tunes yeah. in, like, yeah. in a warm up. If, if, if you're doing warm up and then you want to try and press the DJ, yeah, don't fucking play main tune sets. Yeah. Warm it up. T- get the tea ready for him to swing. Do you know what I mean? Get the team ready for him to fucking. Because I feel like they will respect that more that you've warmed up the crowd the right way. You haven't. They will because Stylo goes. Stylo goes in the podcast. He goes. Like he walked in, and the guy started. He had, I think he had ten minutes to go, and the guy started shelling bare tunes before, before. And if if I went to if, if I was Stylo, if he would have kept the crowd at level, warmed them up nicely, ready for me, then I'd be happy with that. But if I'm fucking, if walk in and he's playing X Y Z, and you're like raw, so Stylo said he had to reset the whole reset thing. Reset the whole thing, yeah. Turn the music down. Do his. Speak, like speak on the mic, Sweet, yeah. and he has. He said, he said he said he has a little intro. Then reset the night in it. Like mm. he needs, yeah. So if that happens, he said reset the night, man. Because um, like, no, yeah, warm up, warm ups and all this stuff. DJ X, <coughs> said, it's yeah. a whole other fucking thing. Man. Definitely. So it says, are you ever afraid to play certain drill tracks before uh, because of gang vi- viral? Rivalry. Never had that because I've never been. I've never had to play in London like proper. Yeah. Well, the only place, only place I play drill tracks is Royal Holloway because I think they're re- they're really on their drill. So people will yeah. message me with a whole bunch of drill songs in it that I don't know about. So what I'll do, I'll go listen to them. If I like them, I'll go listen to them in it. But with this whole gang rivalry thing, I don't, I don't know nothing about it. In it. But to be honest, yeah. that, that's some madness. That you can't run tunes because There's, of certain. I mean, I I, I, I played like, drill, so I used to have a residency in Croydon. Like, so obviously, when you're playing drill in Croydon, it's a bit different. So, like, I I yeah. like when I put what did I put down? Um, I forgot a tune. Um, anyway, so I put down a drill track and like started a fight. Mm quick within like two seconds of the track you know and like the, the manager i see like the manager getting out, out of his table running to me like just copy it out like stop the track like places like that i'd kind of be scared to play drill yeah. because i don't yeah. want anything like that to spark yeah. a fight but otherwise in terms of gang rivalry i don't think it's a i'm not really fast like you shouldn't even be in a club anyway you know what i mean like if you're gonna spark a fight yeah, you need to drill I, music. I... Yeah, I don't. What artists and up and coming are you rare at the moment? Um, <laughs> Why Denzel? You like doing a music thing now? <laughs> um, do you know what? I'm not really. I, I don't. I don't kind of keep up. Yeah. Yeah, I struggle with trying to keep up with everything, man. Like what artists are coming up rare at the moment? Like. Like I rate like Darku, I think he must have said but Darku's hard these days. Like, like, like she's good, but I don't know. I'm, I'm really, I'm fucking, I'm shit with like, with like. So I, I don't keep up to date with um up and coming artists as such. Like I know obviously like Romzy, Kimbo, Hacks, like those kind of people. I kind of keep up with, but other, other, other than that, I don't really keep up with. Up and like I follow um I follow I follow a couple of people from back in the ends. Like so I used to live in Slough in it. Um, yeah. So there's this guy called General uh, Boy for Kids, and um, so I used to follow uh, this guy called Mikel. So I, basically, I like following local talent in it because yeah. it's just because I, I feel like as a DJ in that in that area, I feel like I should be plugging their music in it. Like I should be running their music because I, I like to support. Because obviously, these people supported me when I was fucking. I'm not saying I'm a big time DJ, but like small time, small time DJ. Like they were helping yeah, me yeah. and stuff like that. So like I always want to push their music and stuff like that. But with upcoming nights, I can't really I'm I'm shit with keeping up with all that stuff. Bruce just said, hang on, what do you say? How's the producing go? Brother. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Producing is, is next level. Like I'm not I'm not trying to get to food, I'm trying to do the whole beat making thing in it. Mm. And like so I started this quarantine. I sat down and I started running through bed for it. So I understand how to make. I understand. I know how to make a beat. I know how to fucking do the drums. I know how to do the 808s and stuff like that. But putting it all together 
and making it sound like something I like is hard. Like any, so I'll, I'll pull a sample, yeah, put some drums on it. So I'll pull the sample, I'll listen to it. I'm like, yeah, this is all right. This is all right. Yeah. Put some drums on it. Then I'll come back the next day, listen to it. I'm like, this is dead. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard. Like, it's, 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 it's hard, man. Like, I don't really know what makes, I don't know really what makes a band a sick tune because I've evaluated, so I've been going through, like, some of D-Block's beats, yeah. Cardi B's beats and stuff like that. And, like, they're so simple. Like, Bodak Yellow, yeah, is the most sick, simple track. It's yeah. so easy, um, but it's a banger. But I feel like with me, I feel like to make a banger, you need to overcomplicate it. You need to put all these sounds in it. You need to put this and stuff like that. So mm. I don't really know. I don't really know where to stop or when. Do you know what I mean? So I've made I've done beats on my computer, but like I don't really I don't I don't think they're good enough. So why would I give them up? If I don't think things are good enough. Why would I yeah. give some people because they won't think it's good enough? <clears throat> I mean, so would you want to go? I, I took a um, bus Would you want to go down the production route as well, or just keep it? So at the moment, it's more of a hobby. It's sort of like if if I get good at it, then I might take it up, or whatever. But it's yeah. gosh, trust me, man, it's difficult. Like, and obviously, it's easy. It's all well and good getting samples, but then sometimes you need to make your own melodies. You need to use the piano. You need to know music theory. You need to know just hard, man. It's 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 it's, it's like produ- like producers. Yeah, I rate them highly, man. I hate like, I rate them so highly because like like J J Five, yeah. His tune, like his beats are his beats are. Like, I don't really listen to J Five to be honest. His uh, his, beat, his his beats are simple but they're effective. Like O T Bop, yeah. I recreated it on my computer, yeah. Yeah. It's literally so fucking easy, but yeah. the thing is, but, but the thing is, like the way he made it and the way they made it sound, like, mate, it's it's fucking crazy, man. Like, <clears throat> yeah, Bruce said, like, bro, uh, look at Joanna by Afrobeat as well. Like, it's a song of three choruses. Mm, it's it's crazy, man. So it's like, <laughs> but the thing is, I don't know what kind of sound I want to make at the moment. I'm trying to create a sound for D Block. I'm trying yeah. to make a. Do you know what I mean? I don't really know what sort of kind of thing I want to get into, but. Once I figure out what kind of sound I want to get into, then I might explore it a bit more. Yeah. But, like, I think... What's your, what's your take on, like, the music scene kind of going towards Afrobeat, Bashment kind of now, like, <clears throat> a lot of producers going into that? Do you think, uh, like, it will pop off in clubs, like, more Bashment, Afrobeats, or do you think hip-hop will still dominate? It's hard. It's hard. It depends, man. Like, when you've got the hardcore urban events, yeah, Afrobeats and Bashment will always pop. Yeah, and stuff like that. But like commercial, like massive clubs, like your isms and your fucking, you ain't gonna really be able to get away with too much um, bashment and Afrobeat. I feel because the thing is, the thing is, people come to a club and and they think they want to hear bashment and they think they want to hear Afrobeat, but they only want to hear the bait tunes. If you if you if you if you go to um. A club, yeah, and run an Afrobeats tune that's underground, yeah. They'll be like, "Oh, Afro, Afro. I'm like, this is Afrobeats." Do you know what I mean? Like, people don't yeah. even know, people people just want to hear the ba- like the bait the bait stuff in it. Like Afrobeats, they want to hear Joanna. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And then that's it. That's the o- that's the only that's the only thing they know. And then Bashman, <coughs> they want yeah, to hear Robin it. Red Bull. yeah, <laughs> Robin, do you know what I mean? They Literally, think that, they think that they think that's the only thing. They think that's you know the I mean? only. Do you know what I mean? And like, and then they, they hear Brock off your back, and they're like, yeah, 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 and then you play something else. Like, some people might not even know what fucking wine and cotch is. You play that, no, it's like, oh. weird because people people know what touchdown is, but people don't know what dumpling is. You know what I mean? Like, it's weird. Yeah, it's like, yeah. Weird. It's fucking crazy, man. Like, yeah, he says, bear show, bear show pool. <laughs> <laughs> Give oh, me the light, is the tune. Give me the light. That, all the white girls. <laughs> people, people, yeah. People, people love fucking yeah, man. And walk about they love Sean Paul, bro. Trust me. Like get busy, I mean, all of them ones. Like, like bro, it's like temperature. Yeah. People go oh, crazy. I hate him. I hate you know what they hear? When they hear the starting bit, and everyone's like, "What?" <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's crazy, man. Like, well, yeah, I think like the reason why is I think people kind of get confused, right? They hear stuff on the radio and they get confused between pop, commercial. 
hip, actual hip hop, R and B, dancehall. Because like they hear touchdown on the radio, they think that's like pop. Like that's not pop. Like they get confused when like that's why I've had one time where I'm like I think you had it as well. Like you're playing like let's say hip hop, and they're like, "Can you play hip hop?" Mm, yeah, or like, yeah. Can you, play, you know. Yeah, man. Like, no, yeah. If you, play, if you play the underground hip hop, yeah, the people that are for hip hop in the club, anyone want it? They don't know it. They don't know it. They don't fucking know it, man. Like they just, they just want to go up to the booth, basically. Half the time, they want to just come up to the booth. Yeah, man. Most of the time, most of the time, customers want to hear Kiss One Hundred. This is in Walk, uh, Walk by anyway. Um, Kiss One Hundred or like something they hear on Spotify. You know the Who We Be playlist and stuff like that, innit? Mm. Um, Your girl's on it today. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it. What's the funniest thing that you've seen while doing this bit? Uh, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know. Oh, no, yeah. I, you know, I feel, you know what? You know what I feel? Actually, no. Funniest thing was I was playing, I was playing, I warmed up, I was playing that um, fucking umbrella by, uh, obviously, mm. Rihanna, yeah. And to a couple of bare girls on the dance floor just had their umbrellas up in the place. I was like, you're going to get bad luck today. <laughs> <laughs> um, funniest thing. Yo, yeah, you know what I find fucking jokes? When fights break out and I'm just there, just chilling, playing tunes. And what? Like, I'm just there. Bro, I'm just like, people, I've seen a fight break out, yeah, and I've seen a girl pick up a glass, yeah, and this is me yeah. a in the booth like this. I didn't even react. I just don't react. I'm just like, bro. Funniest thing I've seen was, this guy, it was New Year's Eve, this guy bought, um, like, a 300 quid bottle of champagne, mm. poured it on his friend, mm. but I didn't know, I, I thought they were calm, like, I literally thought they were calm, but basically the guy was chatting to his girl, <laughs> but they acted like it was a joke at the start, so, like, they were hugging it out, he pours the champagne over him, mm. then he just smashes the bottle, like, he's running, he smashes the bottle, and I'm like, and so everyone's like, oh my god, what's going on, so I have to cut the music, and like it's crazy. Even another one. <clears throat> so I was DJing for Formula One uh, yeah. in, in December. Uh, in uh, so I was on the uh, Monster Energy yacht. So that is weird. It's so weird because obviously a lot of yachts, right? They don't allow you to wear shoes mm. unless it's like say the deck shoes or whatever it is. Uh, no one's wearing shoes or socks or whatever. They're still serving glass. The fuck? <laughs> yeah, they're still selling glass, like glass cups. I'm like, what is going on? So anyway, I'm DJing, and this guy's dropped the glass. Obviously, he's fucked. Like he's dropped the glass, mm. like blood everywhere. I don't know. It's not. It's it's not funny until later. But basically, he was like, he was obviously lost a bit of blood. So then he started going, I want Chinese food. He's like screaming, I want Chinese. I want Chinese. <laughs> And, like, we had to go get fucking Chinese food because he was like, I ain't leaving a boat unless I get Chinese food. And we're trying to get the medics. And we're like, look at your leg. Yeah, yeah, like, not... <laughs> but it's, it's crazy, man. Like, alcohol does a lot. <laughs> yeah, man. The shit you fucking see, man. That's some and then start with subtle flex. It wasn't, it, it, you know, like, obviously, I'm interviewing. So, like, I need to get a little bit out of me there. Like... <laughs> yeah, don't worry, man. That's one of these interviews are for, man. To find out, find out about DJs and stuff like that, man. Yeah. Crazy, but yeah, man. Like, what's 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 like what's plans for the for the rest of quarantine for you? What are you doing? Chilling, man. You know what? I'm gonna improve this um scratching business. I mean, you know what it is? Yeah, there's some advanced scratches I can't get my head around, man. Like, um, it's stuff like that. Just improve my scratching, do a few more videos, and just fucking chill. You know what? Yeah, I'm just enjoying the, the relaxation because when obviously when we're back. With flat yeah, I'm going yeah. flat out. I'm trying to, but I'm going to as many nights out as possible to network as well and doing the most. So I'm just doing, I'm just doing my thing, man. Like I've just start, I started this um doing scratching and doing more like becoming a more technical DJ because yeah, I want to start, I want to elevate myself in the DJ world kind of thing. Like it's all well and good beat matching, fucking tunes starting at the start of the chorus and then ending and yeah. changing up. It's all well and good but like I know like in a club I'm I'm not trying to say that I'm gonna do bare scratching in the club. I'm doing it to more showcase my talent on online. Like I'm not gonna yeah. you're not gonna you're not gonna see me in a club fucking doing <laughs> all this bullshit because people don't want it. Like in a club you'll just hear me playing some smooth transitions, you'll you'll night you'll enjoy your whole night and stuff like that. But when I'm at home or when I'm showing myself on Instagram, you're going to see all this scratching, you're going to see all these cool shit, because 
<clears throat> that's how I feel I'm also going to get myself out there as well. Like, the amount of DJs that's, the amount of DJs that's added me in the past few... <laughs> 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 the, the, the amount of DJs that's added me in the past few weeks because I've been doing my videos and they've been messaging yeah. me saying, rah, that's sick, man. How did you get into scratching? What? Like, and I've been sending them the, uh, the tutorial to it. So, like, it's all well and good having customers, but it's also good other DJs appreciating what you're doing as well. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. I'm just trying to just build up my build up my skills, man. So when I come when I go out, mm -hmm. just gonna sell it down there. That's what that's, that's what that's what, that's what I'm doing. Man. Yeah, bro. I'm just I'm, I'm enjoying I'm enjoying the relaxation, bro. Of like, because Martin out. The only um, people that like scratching in the clubs are DJs. <laughs> what? And, and, and that's true. Yeah, yeah. That is true. The, the DJs that like that's that's true. That is true. Like when I went to when I went to uh, Serato. There was DJ scratching and doing all this stuff, and it's sick. But in a club, you don't want to hear that. You don't wanna, you in don't a club, it just ruins the flow. It. it ruins the flow. Like, I've seen some DJs do it, and I'm like, why are you doing it? Like, everyone, like, obviously, if it's like a small scratch to get in the tune, then it's fine. But when you're doing like a whole scratch mix thing going on, like, I don't really. It, like, it, 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 also, it also depends on the venue, man. Like, there's a few DJs. Yeah. I think there's a DJ, there's a, there's a DJ in. I don't know if it's Newcastle, is it, is it DJ? I can't remember his name. There's a sick DJ in the DJ's end. I think he does all this scratching stuff. But the thing is, the customers are going there for him and they know yeah, that he yeah, does yeah. that. So but if, if, most if of the they, people are going there for the party at night. If you're going to a commercial place and you start busting up scratching, yeah, everyone's going to be like, what the fuck are you doing, man? <laughs> and especially if it's not good. Like, if it's, if it's not good and he ain't perfected it, then I wouldn't bust it out. Yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't really do my scratching that I'm doing here in a club because, but one, I'm not fucking amazing at it, yeah. And two, people don't want to hear it. I'll go to a club, shut it down, and leave. Do you know what I mean? Like, mm. that's my my style of things, man. But yeah, bro, appreciate it, man. Like, you know, no worries, I'm up. <laughs> I'm up a waffle, yeah. Bro, bro, I could go for another fucking ten hours, bro. Fucking throw it out. But no, I appreciate it, bro. Um, That's all good, man. Keep keep doing your thing, man. Keep fucking doing these interviews. I'm gonna be keep trying to carry on watching them anyway, man. DJ's in the in the um in the comments. Make sure you hit up DJ Chris because and do some interviews with him, man. Get talking, start talking about your experiences and stuff like that. Follow him up it's, as well, yeah, man. Yeah, because like, the thing is, it's like what people have kind of been saying is just like it's nice to just talk about their you know their career and yeah, like man, it's good. It's good. How many people can yeah, do that? Good. Yeah, it's good to reflect like, on what you've done, man. Like. There's so many yeah. things like in this chat. I could I could talk about this chat, but there's too much. There's so much stuff in there. Yeah, but, um, but that's why I'm yeah, gonna get man. people to come back as well, in case you like, you know, if you want to talk more. Obviously, I know you like to talk, so. Oh, days, man. Talk for days. But yeah, bro, appreciate it, bro. No worries, um, man. but yeah, I'm on I'm on live seven to eight today, just like little one hour set. So yeah, mm. just like join oh, that. Cool, man. Catch um, you soon, man. Cool, bro. Yeah, catch you soon, right, bro. Take it easy, yeah? Take it easy, yeah?